Okay, I wanted to do an intro to testing on Android because Android has a few uh, unique challenges to it. Um, first of all, you'll quickly find out that Android code can only be run on an emulator or device. You can't uh, run it on your local system and when you're compiling, you're actually compiling against stubs, um, not actual run runnable code. Uh, secondly, you'll find out that due to licensing issues, um, em emulator images don't normally have Google APIs installed by default, so you have to find a way of installing those. Um, another complication, of course, is um, there are different devices and versions of Android that you really need to test against, um, which kind of argues for emulators, so you can set those out. On the other hand, emulators can be slow. On the other hand, you may only have one device. So there's that back and forth. And if you want to use more advanced test frameworks, they can be hard to set up. So for, for now, we're going to go with the simple out-of-the-box solutions that we get without resorting to a, a, a framework. Okay, So let's look at the options that we have um, from the most simple to the more complex. Okay, The first thing that we can do, which is the simplest, is pure Java testing um, unit testing and it can run on your local system because it doesn't call any Android APIs. Okay. Next you have Android unit testing which calls Android APIs so that means it has to run on an emulator or device. Um, then you have Android functional testing which um, is a little bit more um, uh, complete than the Android unit testing. Again it must run on an emulator or device. Um, if you want to test Google APIs, um, then you have to depend on Play Store and other uh, Google components being installed. And finally, you have um, testing frameworks such as Robotium and Roboelectric and Expresso, and other frameworks. Um, but those add a la another layer of complexity. There's learning involved, and um, they're, they can be harder to set up. Um, so net for now, we're going to. Um, concentrate on these because these come out of the box these are things you can do um, with your 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 basic installation all right let's get into it so this is our recycle Austin group project and I've set this up to do Java unit testing so how did I do that well the first thing I did was I added a module here and you notice this this services module is a pure Java module it's not an Android module, okay? So it's only going to hold Java code, okay? And you notice um, my uh, top level settings uh, dot Gradle. Now we have two modules there: the Recycle Austin, which is our Android app, and then the Services, which contains Java code. Um, and when the when your uh, APK is built, this uh, Java code will be converted to Dex. And, and brought into your APK. Um, then what did we do? Um, we have a source folder here. Under that, um, by default, you get this main Java structure um, where you put your source code. And then I added this test folder. And under that, I added a Java folder. And you notice this Java folder is green. The reason it's green is because, um, by default, that is the uh, test folder recognized by Gradle and because uh, Android Studio works with Gradle it recognizes this as a unit test folder I don't have to do anything that's just a default if I follow that naming convention okay and the other thing I did was um, I brought in a couple dependencies and one of these dependencies is JUnit and this is JUnit 4 um, because it allows you to use annotations, it's a little bit more um, uh, more feature rich than JUnit 3. Um, so at this point, um, I can create you know a code here that's pure Java. Um, so I have this this kind of a, a mocked out service that has some methods in there, and then I can write a unit test where I can test that. So here's my unit test. Um, it's a JUnit4 unit test. Um, 
so you see that it doesn't have to inherit from any particular class but the test methods have to be annotated with this test and that's how the test runner knows that this is an Android unit test and you can see here that um, um, in this particular test method I in, in the in the setup I've actually created an instance of this service that I want to test in this te test method I'm calling a method on that service and checking the results okay so how do I run that okay I want to run that now well it couldn't be e couldn't be hard couldn't be easier <laughs> I right click on it and I just run it and it and Android Studio knows that this is a unit test okay so it's gonna it's first gonna do a mate a gradle build and then in a very um, you can see down at the bottom it's doing a, a compile and now it's already running giving me the results and you can see everything's green and it says all tests have have passed okay uh, let's see what happens if that fails what does that look like all right so we're gonna make that fail now and we're gonna run it again okay and again it does a, it does a complete build and there we go so the results are red and it tells me exactly where the problem is that these two things are not equal and I can click and I have a comparator here that shows um, the difference so that is your um, Java uh, unit test where you don't have to run, run it all in, in an emulator but that's only if your code is is pure Java and doesn't call any Android APIs. Okay, my next level of complexity is where I'm doing an Android unit test. Okay, so this actually is a going to be a test folder set up in my my Android module. So what I did was um, simply create it under my source folder, um, parallel to my main folder. I have an Android test, and under that there's a Java folder. And you notice again that this um, Android Studio colors this green because this is the default folder name for Android tests um, recognized by Gradle. You can change those but we're, we're keeping the default. And in that test folder I can put Android unit test. And so um, here's, a, here's an example. Um, Android unit test that tests an activity. Um, now this ex extends from activity unit test case and that also extends from from a JUnit uh, test case um, but we're using JUnit 3 so you're stuck with JUnit 3 um, with when you're doing Android tests um, so you, you do, you're not using uh, annotations to mark your, your methods you're actually inheriting from a test case so when you what's happening here is when this runs this will actually run on the emulator but it's testing an activity in isolation okay so what are, what are we testing here well the first thing that's going to happen is is this uh, um, activity gets started um, in the setup um, and then we're we're going to um, uh, perform some operations on that activity um, so here down here um, we actually um, can call uh, methods like perform item click on this particular grid view and in the actual app when you click on those uh, it actually fires off an intent so what we're going to do is check that the intent um, that gets called matches the one that we expect okay that's all that's all we're doing at that point um, so how do we run this particular unit test again it's 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 very simple to run um, all you need to do is um, right click on it and and run it and again down here you see that Gradle's doing a compile so it's compiling the project to make sure everything's up up to date um, you can change that of course with your run configurations now um, it's, it knows that I have to run this on an emulator or device and it knows that I don't have one running so um, it's going to uh, ask for an emulator to instance the startup so I, I pick one and my emulator is now 
uh, running in its own window um, and we could see how long it takes um, to to start up um, and you can see over here that the it's still instantiating the test and there all of a sudden boom it says the tests have passed so let's let's look at those um, so everything came up green um, now once this test is run because my emulator is now running I can run another instance of that test very quickly so um, it does take a little bit of time for the emulator to start but once it's starting you know I can run these tests again and again and make changes so it's it's very quick um, at that point okay so that's unit testing Oh, finally let's suppose we want to simulate a user actually uh, operating the user interface and clicking on buttons and that kind of stuff okay so we can do that as well with out-of-the-box Android testing but in this case we're going to inherit from a different uh, test class so here we're we're testing activity but we're inheriting from activity instrument test case 2 okay so this lets us operate this activity in a real context and actually lets us operate the user interface okay so let's look at that for a second um, so this particular view has a spinner on it so we're actually going to go through the spinner through all the possible um, positions on the spinner and we're going to compare um, each value on the spinner to an expected value okay and um, th again running this is just a matter of right clicking on it and clicking run um, it's going to do a, a compile and a build and I already have my emulator running so I'm just going to click OK and this test doesn't give a, a pass because I still need to work on it oh so <laughs> so this shows that it's running on the real emulator but I, I have my my key guard locked so I'm gonna have to unlock that to run this and then I'm gonna run it again okay and now now if you notice okay that you might not have seen that so let me see if I can show you this Okay, so I'm going to run this again. I want to show you something really quick here. Uh, I'm going to start it, and then I'm going to bring up the emulator. I want you to see something um, on the emulator here. Okay, so did you notice that the the actual UI came up, and you could see it actually operating the user interface for a second. So this is actually simulating realistically what happens when a user clicks those buttons. And and so you have to be careful you don't play with your emulator while this is running because it'll mess up your test. Um, but that's functional testing um, with the um, out of the box Android testing.